unless you would have, and then again, if you take a step back too, why would this, why would the FBI in the middle of an investigation or a section of the FBI during the course of an that that section of the FBI wasn't even a part of the investigation. So put it's like you had how can I put this in a better term? Let's say um, if you were if you were PMP and and then you you were MBI. Them, and then the guy in the middle was offering the PNP 25 seats for the F NBI to go to different provinces, it'd be that sort of deal. Because unless it's not the right department within the organization that you're offering a deal to. What about the, uh, well, they say the alleged meeting of President Clinton with the Attorney General? What was that meeting about? Oh, uh, see that meeting. I think that was a chance meeting. Of course, uh, Hillary was being investigated by the Bureau. And then, uh, let's face it, the uh, Attorney General should have known better. But I think she got wrapped into that. And I, I, you know, Filipinos especially, they get, they fall into that trap in, where they're offered a social meeting with the person of uh, I don't know, high celebrity status and of high, uh, of an, not high celebrity status, but also of a, of a position within within the government. Although he would have been a former position, he was still idol, idolized by, uh, by most people in the present government now. So they were, I think, was that in, in Atlanta? I don't recall what the airport was, but it was a chance encounter. I don't think, uh, the Attorney General, again, that's my opinion based upon the media that I'm seeing. I don't think that she had any intent to discuss uh, the case with Hillary and whether or not Bill Clinton had ulterior motives to, to, pre to present the case, I, I don't know. But I don't think, uh, I think it was taken out of proportion. But also, on the flip side of it, the Attorney General should have known better and not met with the husband on mm -hmm. that aircraft. Yes. Now, speaking of these two candidates, well, our survey says it's the most challenging presidential elections because they're two of the most unfavorable candidates for president. Now, saying that there are many allegations of sexual harassment and uh, about the business system operations of Mr. Trump with regards to the Trump University, and uh, not uh, submitting his taxes. And on the other hand, with uh, Hillary Rodham Clinton, the WikiLeaks, the foundation, the receiving of uh, big donations, the Wall Street, who do you think, on a scale of 1 to 10, what will be your grade for Mr. Trump, and what will it be for Hillary Rodham Clinton? What do you mean a grade? Like, uh, Between 1 to 10. Yeah, 1 to 10. What will be 10 being the highest, meaning most trustworthy? And, uh, of course, 1 will be the least trustworthy. Uh, okay, so I'd say with uh, Hillary Clinton, I'd say I'd give her a level of 4 to be trustworthy. Or, no, less. let's make it 3. Let's make it 3. In terms of uh, of Mr. Trump, I would give him seven of being trustworthy. Higher, but you know, not in the nines or tens. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. yes. Mr. Well, about the, the allegations against him in terms of these women coming up front right now and saying that, are, is this a very important consideration when you go to the polls to elect a president? Uh, I don't want to say boys will be boys, but I've been with senior government officials and to put into perspectives of the Philippine government. And sometimes, you know, guys around, guys will, will, will talk a certain way and will blow a lot of hot air. And whether they mean it or not is another thing. And I think um, Donald Trump was caught in that type of situation where he 
whoever he was with uh, for that uh, show and had earned his trust. 